Oh, hey there. So, brackets and flash. What are we going to do about that? Well, I have an action for you guys. Well, I actually have an action set for you guys. But anyway, before we actually get into that, we need to do some adjustments in Lightroom and then head into Photoshop and then we can play the actions. So, let's go ahead and look at the brackets that we have here or the actual exposures. So we got our base exposure right here, which is pretty decent. We got some blown out highlights underneath these cabinets right here. Uh, the windows don't look too bad. They're a little bit hazy. Uh, the light's looking pretty good. Everything's looking pretty okay. Uh, dark exposure. That cabinet's looking better now. The windows still look hazy. I don't know if that's just the actual outside or what. The lights are looking nicer. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Brighter exposure. Looks pretty good for this area and over here. Ooh, I would have totally fixed those if I was this photographer. <laughs> oh, that kills me right now. Anyway, flash exposure, pretty basic, you know, behind the camera flash pointed straight up into the ceiling. Nothing too fancy. I think we have a flash in here. Let's see. Yeah, we got a flash in here. So this guy's using two flashes. And then we got a flash in here. So we've moved from this room to this room and we're gonna combine those very easily before we actually uh, play the action because the action works with only four exposures. I'm holding up three fingers. I can't count. Okay. <laughs> let's let's uh, let's do some basic adjustments. Uh, da, da, da. Sharpening, I'm gonna get rid of that. Don't need no sharpening. Don't need no sharpening? Great English, Hunter. Uh, remove chromatic aberration, enable profile corrections, and I'm gonna jump in the manual, and I'm gonna put three in the amount for the purple hue and three for the amount in the green hue. And I'm gonna do, 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 maybe do an auto white balance adjustment. Ooh, that looks bad, Never mind. <laughs> that looked terrible. Uh, maybe it'll work for this. Yeah, that looks better. I find that auto white balance typically works better on ambient shots than anything else. That looks good. That looks good. What is the white balance on this? Let's match that. So that's like, what, 4600 Kelvin? I guess. Uh, da, da, da. The only thing that bothers me is that this is just way too hot right here. Uh, da, da, da. And everything else looks pretty good. I'm gonna adjust these. They don't have. I'm like before. I was uh, in the um, in my previous videos. I've discussed matching exposures. For this action, it's not too. Uh, what's the word? Important to do that just to get them a little bit close is all you really need like don't match them completely like it's it's not what you need to do it's it, it works perfectly fine if they're not matched but they have to be a little bit close so if it's like two stops apart try to make it closer to one stop apart but they're still having the same kind of you know highlight and shadow detail you know what I mean uh, let's see that's good that looks good okay Control A, that's going to select all the layers that we have visible. We're going to go ahead and edit in open as layers in Photoshop. <laughs> what time is it? It is 7.51 a.m. Good old a.m. Am I right, guys? No, I haven't slept in a long time. Oh, God. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling really good. All right. So we got our images open, we need to turn off the three bracketed exposures and deal with this flash exposure. We want to combine these. And you know, we can you know, make it like a pen tool path and all that nonsense, but what, but what if we want to do that with just a single click of a button? Well, we can. Let's move that base exposure down here. Let's see this. See this thing that says normal? It's a thing that I'm not. Let's switch to, <laughs> let's switch to lighten. Look at that. That's pretty cool. And I'm going to put a layer mask on it because I don't want to affect this window right here. 
and I find that I have to press Windows, the Windows key, to just get my Photoshop to work better, and I don't know why that is. Okay, enough rambling. So, now what we need to do is hold down Shift, select the other layer, and we need to merge layers. So now we have four layers to work with. Our base ambient, our dark ambient, our bright ambient, and our flash exposure or exposures since we merged them. And whoops. So basically, we're going to read this before playing the actions. This is pretty important. It's not really important. But it says, rearrange the layer stack to be in this order from top to bottom. Base, dark, bright, flash. So pretty much what we have right now. Base, dark, bright, flash. Cool, cool, cool. Let's auto align these layers. So auto align. I was going to go on about auto align. That's boring. <laughs> All right, let's start. HDR plus flash full blending workflow. Let's click that button. And it's going to make a bunch of layers and it's going to give you a prompt that says using the brush tool shortcut key buh, paint white to reveal the darker ambient exposure and you see all these little little thingies little things little weird thingy things these are marching ants they basically tell you okay highlights are selected we're gonna limit the exposure or the basically limit the selection to only those areas so when you're painting you're not painting in the darker exposure or, or I should say, the darker elements of the darker exposure. Pretty snazzy stuff, eh? Let's go ahead, woo! Let's go ahead and p p what? Paint white. Yeah, paint white. Do 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 do. And I'm just gonna paint back the window. Paint back the light over there. Maybe bring a little bit more. The more you paint, the more paint goes on the canvas. I never realized how much that's like painting real things. Wow. <laughs> Talk about a, uh, what's it called? What, what? The more you know. Yeah, there you go. Let's, uh, once we're done with that, we can go ahead and hit play and it'll move on to the next step using the brush tool. Paint white to reveal the brighter ambient exposure. Okay, let's bring in that ambient. Look at that. Getting all bright. All bright nonsense. That looks pretty cool, pretty snazzy. This area is looking a bit dirk. Yeah, that looks good. Yeah, a little bit more. A little bit more. Oh, oh, up there definitely needs a little bit more. That looks pretty good. If you ever want to hide these little ants, uh, hit Control H. That's gonna hide it. The selection is still active, but the ants are gone. You know, magic. So once we've done that, let's go ahead and hit play. And look at the colors. They look really weird. So basically what it's done is it's split the exposure of the flash exposure. Split the exposure of the flash exposure? No, that doesn't sound right. And it's using uh, the, uh, what, what, what do you call this? Uh, the color of the flash exposure to do some pretty basic color correction overall of the scene. So you can actually go in and adjust this after the, uh, after the action's finished. But this is for just kind of like uh, basic color correction visualization. So using the brush tool, paint right, paint white to reveal the window pool from the darken layer. You can only use you can also use this for highlights on like the floor and stuff like that. But in this example, I don't really have any of those. And da, 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 da. okay, that's looking pretty good. Let's go ahead and hit play using the brush tool. Oh, these prompts. Paint white to reveal the brighter areas of the flash exposure. So oftentimes I don't 
use this step because I find it's a little bit unnecessary unless the, the exposure is looking dark, which it rarely ever does, but I'm going to paint white in here and I'm going to paint over here maybe, maybe over here, yeah, maybe over there too. Okay, now we can hit play and it's going to do some basic color correction again with a hue saturation layer and it says using the brush tool paint white to adjust the saturation of objects this is this is what happens when you have a lot of wood woody wood woody tones wood woodsy tones and they get a lot they get very oversaturated when you switch the flash exposure to color so this is where you take care of that so i'm going to paint white on these just take out the little bit of that that richness that's in there that's looking a bit too much over here is looking too much and I think that looks pretty good let's go ahead and press play and I believe that is the end of the action and this is what we what we get we get a pretty cool result so like this is the beginning this is the end pretty cool so let's go ahead and actually look at these uh, these uh, these layers. Can't words. So we got a photo filter warmth. What's that? That's basically going to add a little bit of contrast and a little bit of warmth to the photo by using a uh, what do they call these things? Warming filter. You can adjust the intensity or the density, I should say. But I keep it at like thirty percent. Um, you can also adjust the opacity. The more he goes, the more uh, the more the can't talk the more opacity that you have the darker your image is going to get because it's adding more contrast so i'm going to go with the, 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 the what, would, what did i have it at like 30 30 is good hue saturation remove color casts this is essentially removing all the color casts from your more subtler subtler subtle colors so like areas in this wall are more subtle than the more prominent colors in the wood so it's going to remove those but not remove these pretty cool and you can actually see the mask how it's actually working so it's it's making this very dark and making this uh, brighter than everything else so that's pretty cool and we've gone ahead and painted that where it was too too saturated in that area so let's go ahead and get out of that and if you want to adjust the colors like it's too too much and uh, you can just go in and adjust this like maybe there's maybe there's too much red maybe there's not enough red go to yellows too many yellows take them out and then all these other ones the greens the cyans the blues the ma the magentas the <laughs> the magentas uh, those are all at negative 100 um, so really it's only the reds and the yellows because those are the te typically the more prominent colors um, in an interior so this is bothering me okay I'll come back to that I'm gonna show you how you can fix that really simple uh, let's see exposure lighten pretty much what we did with this hallway we've split the exposure so it's working differently so when you have a flash exposure it basically acts as color luminosity lighten and darken and you can actually split them in in not in half split them in quarters and adjust each not channel but each of them uh, each of the the what do you call it each of i can't i can't words uh, but basically, it's just each of them independently from one another. It's super useful, and I don't see a lot of people doing it. So that's what I've done here. So the darken, pretty much pretty simple. Color, I think we can put a little bit more ambient color into this, like the ceiling's looking a bit, dr a bit dull. So I'm going to hit X on the keyboard. That's going to swap my foreground and background colors. Um, if they're not black or white, hit D on the keyboard. That's going to reset them. And let's go ahead and brush. 
brush 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 in a little bit of that ambient color okay cool looks good maybe a little bit more down here yeah that looks good ambient exposures group typically you won't need to mess with these unless you're trying to go for something specific I mean I don't mess with them <laughs> but uh you can always adjust the intensity of the uh, the exposures by adjusting opacity like just like that but typically I like to do that in the brushing stage what is that that's gross I don't want that let's go ahead and make this brush smaller and I'm gonna paint black right here yeah now it looks too dark or too what's the word what is the word not bird that's not the word lame okay oh too much let's take that down to like two percent flow okay that looks better better everything's better okay cool now I'm gonna fix this thing that's where the flash was because it's not in this exposure so let's go ahead and bring in a new layer I'm gonna move it up here and we are gonna set that bad boy to color and next we go to the brush tool or we can just go to uh, shift backspace will give you the fill dialog and we're gonna go ahead and switch that to color the contents I should say and select an area on this tea kettle I think make sure your sample size is anywhere from 3 by 3 to 11 by 11 you don't want point sample because it's most likely gonna pick up like a speck of noise and it's gonna say like oh it's green and it's, it's not gonna work so hit OK press OK and look at that it's it's weird it's all it's all weird what's that movie um what is that movie uh ah magic Mike that movie looks really weird because everything's all like yellow tone okay I'm going on a, on a tangent not a tangent but like getting getting off off track okay this is pretty much the final image that I'm gonna do um, let's go ahead and control shift all E and oh wait I can do that right here with the finishing touches <laughs> and we're gonna go ahead and press play on that and du -du -du. using the radius slider adjust how strong you would like the sharpening to be click OK I'm gonna go with T and look at the difference so pretty and I'm gonna go with oh wait no I already did that never mind you can see the difference T -t -t. nice so that's pretty much it Flatten the image, control S, save that in here, and I'm gonna go down her and hit vertical. That's gonna do a little snazzy little vertical adjustment. It's still kinda off. Maybe that's just the wall. And uh maybe it's a little bit too dark. Yeah, that looks good. Five stars, send that to the client, and they'll be happy, and you are happy too, because you did an edit in no time. I was gonna give it like an actual specific number, but I couldn't think of a number. I couldn't think of a number. Oh my god, what am I? Okay, thank you for watching, everyone. Wow, it's 8.07. Thank you for watching, everyone. I am going to get back to editing for my client who is waiting for his special edits and um, leave a comment below, any advice, any feedback, anything uh, you want to post your images on the Facebook group in the real estate photography Facebook group, you can do that, just tag me in there, 
say like, hey, I processed this with Hunter's actions and it looks cool. Oh, that looks bad. Oh, okay. I get distracted so so easily. But anyway, take care, guys.